Okay, E7, welcome to your video tutorial on multiplying and dividing fractions. Now, you'll be very glad to hear, multiplying and dividing fractions is far more straightforward than adding and subtracting. So when we look at the other two operators, it becomes much easier, and I'm going to show you why. Okay, let's look at this first example here. It says 2 two thirds times 1 fifth. Now, when we multiply two fractions together, all we have to do is multiply the top, the numerator by the numerator, and the denominator by the denominator. So that becomes 1 times 2 is 2, 3 times 5 is 15. The main question I have to ask myself at this point, is there a number that goes into 2 that also goes into 15? Or can I write 2 fifteenths in a more simple way? The answer is no, so my answer stays that way. Okay, let's have a look at the next example. What happens instead, actually we'll go with this one, 3 quarters times 8 ninths. So again, I multiply my numerator by my numerator and my denominator by my denominator. So 3 eighths are 24, whereas 4 ninths, 4 times 9 is 36. So the thing I have to ask myself, is there a number that goes into 24? that goes into 36. Well, I can go with 2, okay, and I could halve 24 and I could halve 36. But if I keep on going, there's actually a bigger number, okay? And I mean, I can keep on going with that process of halving it for as long as I want, but there is actually a, a number, and the number's 12. It goes into 24 twice and into 36 three times. So if I write in a test that the answer is 24 on 36, I might only get one mark because I've only got half of the way there. Okay, always have to ask myself, can I write this more simply? Okay, let's have a look at the next one. What happens if I'm trying to multiply a third by a whole number? Okay, so one third multiplied by 21. I'm going to rewrite it and show you what I can do. Now, 21... I can write that in a fraction form. I can actually just write 21 on 1. Okay, so if I'm looking to find a third of 21, a little note, I keep on using the word of. Of means times. Okay, so 21 then multiplied by 1 becomes 21. 3 multiplied by 1 becomes 3. So 21 on 3 is there a number that goes into 21 that also goes into 3? Of course there is. Okay, and the answer is 7. Uh, the answer is 3, sorry. 3 goes into 21 7 times and goes into 3 goes into 3 once. Okay, so 3 goes into 21 7 and goes into itself once. Now, when I get an answer like this and it says 7 on 1, as soon as anything is on 1, it means divided by itself. So I can actually just rewrite that as 7. As soon as anything is on 1, it means the number is itself. Okay, so that's that one there. Let's look at one other example. Let's look at 2 and a third times 1 and 2 fifths. Okay, I'm going to deal with the fraction separately. I'm going to go, okay, that's the same as saying 1 third times 2 fifths times 2 times 1, okay? So I'm going to put these off to the side for the moment, okay? I'm going to put those those two, or that, those one, that 2 and 1 off to the side, and I'm just going to deal with my fraction. So 1 multiplied by 2 is 2. 3 multiplied by 5 is 15. Then I do what's multiplied by 2, multiplied by 1, what's 2 times 1? 2. So my answer for this one becomes 2 and 2 on 15. The principles when I'm dividing become a little bit different. Okay, so as soon as I see the division here, I need to do what we call the reciprocal. Okay, I need to flip this fraction. Okay, I'm going to flip this fraction so it comes out as 1 fifth. I'll flip it. Now if I flip that second fraction... Okay, I've done the opposite to that fraction. I'm also going to do the opposite operation. So I can't divide two fractions in my head. I can multiply them. 
So if I'm doing the opposite operation, I must make one of my fractions the opposite. Okay, so 1 multiplied by 4 is 4, 5 multiplied by 1 is 5. Okay, so I follow the same principles as I did with multiplication, and I get my answer, 4 fifths. Let's have a look at another example. Let's have a look at, say, 3 fifths divided by 3 eighths. Now I know I do the opposite or the reciprocal. I know I can't do division by hand. Okay, so if I'm doing the opposite operation, I must flip my second fraction and also do the opposite operation. So the second fraction becomes 8 on 3. So 3 times 8 is 24. Okay, three, 5 times 3 is 15. It's an improper fraction, certainly I notice this, but the first thing I ask myself, is there a number that goes into 24 that also goes into 15? Can I write 24 on 15 in a more simple way? And if I start doing my, uh, I, I start looking at, at numbers that go into 24 and 15, I'll realise that 3 does. 3 goes into 24 8 times and it goes into 15 5 times. Now 8 on 5, I, I can leave it that way, but it's an improper fraction. Sometimes it's best that we express improper fractions as mixed numerals. Okay, and to convert that, I say, how many times does 5 go into 8? It's a whole number once with a remainder of 3 on, and I leave my denominator the same, 3 on 5. Okay, let's look at one last example. Okay, let's look at this example here of, oh, let's see how long this is going to take to delete heaps long, apparently. There we go. Okay, let's look at this one here. 2 and 2 fifths divided by 1 and 3 fifths. Now, this one's actually a little bit a little bit complicated. So the first thing I'm going to do, because I notice they both have the same denominator, okay, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change them into an improper fraction just so it makes a bit more sense for me. So 2 times 5 is 10. Again, changing improper fractions, I go my denominator multiplied by my whole number. 2 times 5 is 10, and then I add the 2, so it becomes 12 on 5. Okay. 1 times 5 is 5, plus 3 is 8 on 5. Now that's a division. 12 on 5 divided by 8 on 5 is the same way as saying 2 and 2 fifths divided by 1 and 3 fifths, okay? But I know that I can't do this in my head. So I actually have to swap them around. And I have to do the opposite operation. So 12 times 5... When I put 12 times 5, sorry, when I, when, I flip the, when I flip the fraction, I get 12 times 5. 12 times 5 is 60. Okay. And then when I do 5 times 8, I get my answer of 40. 40. I ask myself, is there a number that goes into 60 that also goes into 40? I can see 10 immediately. I see there's a 0 there and there's a 0 there, so then I get 6 on 4. Okay, but then I still need to ask myself, is there still a number that goes into 6 that goes into 4? And the answer is 2. 2 goes into 6 three times and goes into 4 twice. Always constantly ask yourself, can I simplify this further? Now you'll notice again the same thing has happened here. It says 3 on 2, so it's an improper fraction. So I'll have to rewrite that to 1 and a half. 2 goes into 3 one whole time with one remainder. So my answer for this one here becomes one and a half. I got given it as a mixed numeral. That was the purpose of my question. Therefore, my structure of my response also has to be in a mixed numeral.